Hi everyone, my name is Bahadur. For today's episode, we have guests from Kyrgyzstan. Let's check it out. Hi everybody, my name is Saeed Turhan and I am from Kyrgyzstan. And today I'll be presenting you my country and some of the things that we do during Ramadan in our country. Kyrgyzstan is a country that is located in Central Asia. It is a very beautiful country, in my opinion. It is very green, filled with mountains, horses, waterfalls, everything green. So I have this one fun story that I experienced during Ramadan. I guess it was three years ago. It is a so classic story. I guess every Muslim who has ever fasted has experienced this. So my mom, before, uh, before like one hour, to the iftar she asked me to go to the market and buy, buy some groceries that we needed for the meal and uh, she insisted to, for me to bring my little brother with me he was he was i think three years old back then or two maybe so we went to the market it was near we went to the market i, I started buying groceries and he saw a juice so he wanted that juice and but during that time even though it was summer he had this like throat ache he had he was coughing and stuff so i could buy him that juice only if it was at room temperature but it was i guess coldish i i hold the package and it was coldish so i was like you cannot drink this juice before we go home and then it's gonna be room temperature and then you're gonna drink that juice so he started crying and uh, I was trying to how to say make him just forget about that juice and uh, like showing some things like oh my god look at that bird oh my god look at that something so he wouldn't cry and forget about that juice but he he wouldn't so I said okay I'm gonna try this just if it's a cold temperature then you can drink it and if it's not you cannot I opened the package and drank it and it was a actually a warm juice and I gave it to him so we went home and then that's a car yeah so so we went home and literally when it was two minutes left before iftar i remembered that i drank the juice and i didn't know i didn't do it on purpose but i just drank it and i was like oh my god but i know that if you didn't drink it on purpose and you didn't do it like intentionally then it's okay it's like so my parents would tell me like it is just Allah who just helped you. Maybe you were so thirsty or something like that. It's like, okay, but I, it is so a classic story when you forget that you are fasting and drink something or eat something. So one of the first questions I was asked was, what are the some unique things that you may do in Kyrgyzstan that other countries may not do? I really gave it a thought about that, um, but I couldn't really find anything that we, only Kyrgyz people do so I'm gonna go to the next question which is about dishes so I guess one of the most favorite Kyrgyz dishes that most commonly Kyrgyz people love is Bishparmak it literally it translates like five fingers I don't know why, maybe Kyrgyz people used to eat it with their fingers but I don't think it is possible to eat it with fingers because it is a dish consisting of meat and noodles so noodles on the plate and meat on top I guess right now when I think about that it sounds like pasta but it doesn't really look like pasta so you boil the meat in the water for a long period of time like uh, maybe five hours and then you when you get that bone broth really good bone broth you just 
take it out the meat, start cutting it, chopping it, and then put there the noodles for maybe five or seven minutes until it's cooked and then you put the noodles on the plate and then on the top the meat usually we do it with the horse meat but if you do not eat or don't consume it you can use beef but I don't know what would be the option for vegetarian or vegan people because the point of that whole dish is meat yeah, Kyrgyz people consume a lot of So as a final thought, I would like to thank uh, Embracing Ramadan team for letting me share my culture, sharing my experience uh, My experience with Ramadan And thank you everybody for watching this video I hope that uh, you had a great time It was quite a bit entertaining And maybe some of you learned something and maybe some of you have learned that there is actually a country called Kyrgyzstan because I know it is a very small country but it is a beautiful country you have to come and visit sometime um, I would like to show you the view I'm gonna show you the view a little at the end of the video but yeah it is a very beautiful country come and visit yeah so thank you for watching so about the view this is the view from my balcony it is a local school there and it's just their field and this is the view it is so beautiful here and if you would like like exotic experience for traveling Kyrgyzstan I guess it's one of the best options like the country you see these mountains it is mountains there it's just not the clouds yeah so this was the view thank you for watching the act of Muslims helping each other is in many possible ways and one of them is via the act of offering because offering is probably the most effective and easiest means of helping each other. Offering is the bridge which the rich can help the poor in the society. In the world, the spirit of a society rises from social welfare. Giving back to humanity is a third pillar in Islam, zakat. Charity or alms, also known as zakat and sadaqa in Arabic, are fundamental teachings of Islam. Generosity is a central theme in Islam that Allah gives to those who he loves, and he guides us to refrain from attachment to material wealth. Everything, everything we are given, including life, was gifted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakah has been defined and translated in various ways, which include poor rate, thaib, alms tax, and legal alms. Within this context, zakah purifies one's wealth. Sadaqa, on the other hand, has been defined and translated in the following ways. Charity, alms, donation, and tribute. Sadaqa has been linked to the following terms and concepts. Private, unseen, righteous, and truthful. In Arabic, the root term of sadaqa, sadaq, which means to be sincere, shows and it is evident that as zakah purifies wealth, sadaqa purifies oneself. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Charity is obligatory every day on every joint on a human being. If one helps a person in matters concerning his riding animal by helping him to ride it, or by lifting his luggage onto it, all of this will be regarded as charity. A good word and every step one takes to offer the compulsory congressional prayers is regarded as charity. In guiding someone on the road is regarded as charity. Narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, Allah's apostle said, when a woman gives in charity some of the foodstuff 
what she has in her house without spoiling it, she will be received the reward for what she has spent. And her husband will receive the reward because of his earning. And the storekeeper will also have a reward similar to it. The reward of one will not decrease the reward of others. Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, When a person dies, his work ends, except for three. Ongoing charity, knowledgeable that is benefited from, and a righteous child who prays for him. Both zakah and sadaqa are vital elements of Islam that are embodied into Muslims. This sacrifice guarantees protection from tragedies and misfortune. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Give charity without delay, for it stands in the way of calamity. And as the old saying goes, it is always better to give than to receive. There are many ways to give back to the community, families, and friends. One can help mow an elderly's lawn, bring a cousin out of debt, or help a friend get to work. Even when one has little to give, the gift of a smile is the greatest charity of them all. Ya Jameel, Ya Allah, Ya Qareeb, Ya Allah, Ya Mujib, Ya Allah, Ya Habib, Ya Allah, Ya Ra'uf, Ya Allah, Ya Atuf, Ya Allah, Ya Ma'roof, Ya Allah, Ya Latif, Ya Allah, يا عظيم يا الله يا حنان يا الله يا منان يا الله يا ديان يا الله يا سبحان يا الله يا أمان يا الله يا برهان يا الله يا سلطان يا الله يا مستعان يا الله يا محسن يا الله يا متعالي يا الله يا رحمن يا الله يا رحيم يا الله يا كريم يا الله يا مجيد يا الله يا فرد يا الله يا ود يا الله يا أحد يا الله يا صمد يا الله يا محمود يا الله يا صادق الوعد يا الله يا علي يا الله يا غني يا الله يا شافي يا الله يا كافي يا الله يا معافي يا الله يا باقي يا الله يا هادي يا الله يا قادر يا الله يا ساتر يا الله يا قهار يا الله يا جبار يا الله يا غفار يا الله يا فتاح يا الله يا غالبا غير مغلوب يا صانعا غير مصنوع يا خالقا غير مخلوق يا مالكا غير مملوك يا قاهرا غير مقهور يا رافعا غير مرفوع يا حافظا غير محفوظ يا ناصرا غير منصور يا شاهدا غير غائب يا قريبا غير بعيد سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان أجرنا من النار يا نور النور يا منور النور يا مصور النور يا خالق النور يا مقدر النور يا مدبر النور يا نورا قبل كل نور يا نورا بعد كل نور يا نورا فوق كل نور يا نورا ليس مثله نور 
سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان أجرنا من النار يا من عطاؤه شريف يا من فعله لطيف يا من لطفه مقيم يا من إحسانه قديم يا من قوله حق يا من وعده صدق يا من عفوه فضل يا من عذابه عدل يا من ذكره حل يا من أنسه لذيذ سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان أجرنا من النار واسألك بأسمائك يا منول يا مفصل يا مبدل يا مسهل يا مذلل يا منزل يا محول يا مجمل يا مكمل يا مفضل سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان أجرنا من النار يا من يرى ولا يرى يا من يخلق ولا يخلق يا من يهدي ولا يهدى يا من يحيي ولا يحيا يا من يطعم ولا يطعم يا من يجير ولا يجار يا من يقضي ولا يقطع عليه يا من يحكم ولا يحكم عليه يا من لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الأمان الأمان أجرنا من النار Hope you enjoyed this video Our next episode will be from Pakistan Stay safe Goodbye for now.